What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and I'm extremely excited because I'm finally launching my Family Editor in Revit course. So Family Editor is one of the design environments in Revit which allow you to create, well, families. And families are a really important part of Revit. Your uh, Revit projects are only as good as the families that you use, and that's why uh, knowing how to create families, how to modify families, and how to use families properly is really important for working in Revit. Uh, now for this course it took me a long time because I wanted to outline pretty much the pretty much everything that you need to know when it comes to creating families in Revit, the whole uh, the whole approach. So the whole course is 12 hours long. It's available on my website balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be just below in the description of this video and it's available on sale today. Uh, so for this course it's separated into multiple chapters. Uh, in the first chapter we just go over families, uh, what are families, what kinds of families there are, uh, and uh, also uh, what are the family categories and what are the templates that we have for families because we have so many different templates for creating families in Revit. After that we just take a quick little chapter to explore all of the modeling tools and how can you use those modeling tools for the Revit family editor uh, for the Revit family editor design environment and then after that we create a quick little parametric family just to kind of get started uh, learning about how creating parametric families works in Revit and then it restarts to get really excited so exciting so after that we move over to the fourth chapter and in the fourth chapter we start exploring some of the advanced settings and options and tools that we have on offer when it comes to Revit families so uh, we explore things uh, like how to create control arrows. Those are the ones that allow you to kind of flip the families around. You've probably seen them already. Uh, how to create the shape handles. So those are those little drag points which allow you to reshape or resize the family once it's already placed inside of your project. It's really important and it's uh, extremely useful. Uh, after that we move over to uh, controlling visibility of families. So there are so many options and settings when it comes to visibility of our families, how they appear in different uh, views, in different detail levels, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So we explore all of this. After that we move over to symbolic lines. So uh, sometimes you're not going to be using uh, modeling uh, geometry, sometimes you just want to create some symbolic lines that appear either in floor plans or else elevations and so on. So we cover how to use those and we also show how to use those and apply them on things like doors and windows, so how they work in action. Uh, after that we move over to subcategories uh, which are really important uh, and then also we cover how to import different elements and uh, how to use identity data and images, how to fill in that information, which is really useful for creating schedules, schedules with images, which look really cool in my opinion. And then also we talk about type catalogs in this section, uh, so that, that allows you to, when you're loading in a family, you don't want to load in all types, so you can uh, just create this type catalog, which allows you, to, allows you to load in just a few types at a time, just the ones that you need. And then uh, finally, we also cover formulas, which are very complex, uh, and also how to use reference planes and uh, pretty much uh, completing the understanding about reference planes. Now, once we have finished all of these advanced settings, it's time to place everything to the test. And for that, the rest of the chapters are just dedicated to family projects. So we create several uh, really complex, uh, high quality Revit families with high functionality, a lot of parameters, a lot of settings, where we basically explore all of these advanced settings. We explore the whole workflow when it comes to creating Revit families. And uh, we pretty much cover everything inside of this course. So now I'm just going to quickly jump into Revit to show you all of those families that we're going to be creating uh, within this course. So let's go to Revit. And here we are in Revit and as you can see this is the first family, the first family project that we're going to be creating uh, and that 
is this basically a, a door family that has uh, uh, three versions? Well, you can create multiple versions, but let's check out the parameters first. I want I wanted this to be a very versatile family. So here we have this option where it can be kind of a classical door with these uh, with this classical panel. Then we have a simple flat uh, door, wooden door, and then here we have this kind of a metal door, uh, even with a window. Also, you can see that the uh, door knob or the door handle changes. So here we have a knob and then here we have the handle. And also you can control the opening of the door. So if I select the door, scroll down a little bit, we have the panel angle. So you can set that to zero to close the door essentially. And then you can open it up as as much as you would like. So if I set this to 130, I can kind of uh, flip it or open like that. Also, if I select the door, uh, scroll down a little bit, here we have the uh, knob handle toggle. So if I switch this to off, it will go to the door handle. Or if I switch this on, it will go back to the door knob. So that's one of the options that we have. Also, when you select the door here, you can see that if I open up the drop menu, we have multiple uh, options. And also, if I go here into edit type, uh, we can play around with the uh, door frame material. So that's the, the frame of the door as well as the door panel uh, material. And of course, we have many different uh, parameters here for the dimensions of the door as well as the uh, panel thickness. Now, this was modeled as uh, several nested families. So we have one door family. And if I go here into edit family, as you can see, we have one door family. And then the panel here uh, that's edited uh, as well. So we can go here into edit family. As you can see, that's a separate family. And then here, both uh, the door knob or and the door handle are additional nested families inside of this. So we go really deep uh, into exploring how these complex nested families uh, work. But let's close this all off. And there we go. So in the end, we have a very versatile door, you can set up all of the dimensions, you can uh, open it up, close it down, change the handle, change the material, change the window, uh, make it classical, make it plain, you can do pretty much anything with this door. So it's pretty much the only door family that you will ever need uh, to work on your future projects. Okay, moving on, the second uh, family project is this light. So as you can see, it's basically a ceiling light, a circular ceiling light. And here for this, I didn't want to explore only how to set up lights in Revit and how to make them work and light up the uh, light up here the the scene. But also I wanted to add a bit of formula settings. So this, as you can see, uh, we have a triangular layout of these little cables that are hanging from the from the ceiling. Uh, now for that we had to have a special formula which will uh, basically make that triangular shape larger uh, when we make the radius larger and make it smaller when we make the radius smaller for these smaller light versions. So for that, we explore some uh, triangle formulas. Uh, we take out some formulas here and we figure everything out. So once we have all of this uh, kind of figured out, we can go then back to the family and let me just open up this family. So uh, here, as you can see, uh, it allows you to change the ceiling offset. If we set it to, I don't know, if, okay, 40 might be a bit too small, but 300, as you can see, it looks like that. Uh, now, also, if I go here into Edit Family, uh, this is the family, this is the, the light source, but if I go here to the parameters, as you can see, we have many formulas here. We have some square roots, uh, <laughs> different complex formulas, which we figured out, and i show you how to uh, figure that out. It's not that complicated, but in the end, uh, we have all of these uh, really complex formulas figured out and that's what's controlling the whole uh, dimensions uh, of this here uh, triangular shape. So if I go to the ceiling level, for example, there we go. So as you can see, we have one of those here. Uh, one here, one here, and they are in a perfect even triangle. Okay, so let's close that off. So we explore lighting families and also some uh, geometry and formulas for our families. Uh, moving forward, the next uh, family that we create is this uh, bathroom sink uh, mirror combo, as I call it. So here, uh, this is really vers a versatile family because you can apply it in many different bathrooms. Uh, usually, it's really hard to find a nice uh, bathroom kind of uh, sink and a mirror and everything. And this is really versatile. It's really cool. So for example, here for this family, uh, it, it includes everything, but also it's parametric. So you can actually change it. 
When you select this, uh, you have the option to change the shelf material. So for this shelf over here, you can change it into maybe something different. Here we have just this nice wood. Uh, also, you have the option to change uh, the, the position, but uh, more on that a bit later. And also we have the switch sync toggle. So let's see what that does. If I switch this, there we go, we get this cool modern sink. Now this is also a very complex geometric shape to create in Revit. Uh, Revit tools are kind of uh, difficult for creating these types of complex shapes. So I show you how to create this very, uh, very nice looking and uneven uh, geometry, uh, kind of organic geometry. So it's very complicated, but uh, in the end, I show you how to manage to create something like this. And also it's fully parametric, so you can adapt it to any bathroom. Well, let me explain. If I go here to the level one and zoom in a little bit. Uh, so here you can select this family and you can extend that shelf uh, further or bring it in as long as you need it. So you can go wall to wall or you can just extend it as much as you want. Maybe there is a uh, kind of a water closet here so you don't want it to go too far. And also the position of the sink can be changed as well. So you can move the sink a bit off to this side or bring it closer to the wall. So you can play around with that as much as you want. So this, uh, this, the idea is to have this very versatile family, which can then later on be used in numerous projects. Uh, and it will just make your life a lot easier when it comes to completing nice bathroom designs. And of course, when you render this, it's going to look amazing, especially with this elegant sink. But also if you want a regular kind of sink that kind of, uh, goes inside of the shelf, we have that option as well, as you can see. Okay, moving forward, uh, the next is this family, and this is really fun. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, when creating kitchens, it's kind of difficult and it takes a long time to, to figure out the cabinets and how uh, large the cabinets can be, and this is going to save you so much time. So this family, i show you how to create this line-based family, and let me just get rid of it for a second. And let's say you have a certain place where you want to place your cabinets, it's a certain length, and well, with this family, when I go here to component, uh, it's a face-based family, you just click once, you extend it, you click again, there we go. And it basically figures out how many cabinets it can fit in there, and then it basically does that. It fits all of those cabinets inside. So I'll show you how to create this family. It, 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 it does include some interesting formulas just to make the whole thing work. And of course, it's made out of a nested cabinet family. So we first create a single cabinet, it's fully parametric, and then we adjust it uh, to, to make it uh, adjust to this. And also here, as you can see, it has this glass, so you can kind of see inside. But also, if I select this, scroll down a little bit, Okay, it's not here. If we go into edit type, there we go. If we go to glass window and turn it off, hit apply, okay. Now it's just a regular cabinet uh, made out of wood. Also, uh, for the wood, you can change the material here under the cabinet material. So I show you how to set up all of these complex parameters, how to make everything work perfectly. And also because we're kind of in transition between Revit 2020 and Revit 2021, and there are some interesting new features when it comes to voids that help us create that glass opening. I show you how to do that in uh, Revit 2021 as well as Revit 2020. Uh, so that's the family uh, for this. And also we have here I show you how to work with imported geometry because uh, I, there is a lot of nice geometry that you can find from SketchUp or something like that, uh, but that doesn't work very well in Revit. So I show you how can you import some SketchUp geometry and how can you adjust it, adjust the materials, and also how can you uh, work on that family so it uh, appears exactly how you uh, want it to appear in the floor plan view and much, much more. So I show you all of the little tips and tricks for these families. And then finally, I talk about in the 10th chapter, I talk about annotation families. So I talk first about types of annotation families. I talk about gen generic annotation families. Then I show you how to create a repeated uh, re repeated uh, detail family, detail component. And also we cover how to create custom room tags as well as custom title blocks uh, in Revit. So that's the course. Now, again, as you said, you can find it on Balkan Architect uh, dot, uh, com. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. You can uh, purchase the whole course uh, and then you, you will get lifetime access or you can get it as a part of the subscription pack for all of my Revit 
courses. So make sure to check it out. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.